right now. Here. Okay, so thank you all for coming. Uh, good morning. Yeah, so we please hold your questions to the end. Um, and then we'll do another thing we're here today, but like we did last time, I'll get to everybody, but I'll, I'll point, raise your hand, and I'll point to you at the end, and I'll, but I'll make sure I get everybody. Okay, we won't leave till we get everybody. Okay, so first, I'm so sorry uh, for all involved, especially the families of the unaccounted for. Uh, and anybody that's been displaced. My heartfelt condolences on behalf of the city go out to those involved. Thank you all for coming. We're a bit over the 36 hour mark now uh, since the beginning of 324 Main partially collapsed. This is an active incident uh, that is very fluid and ever evolving. Our command staff is coordinating information as available in real time and developing the incident accordingly. We are consistently evaluating and getting real time information. I want to first acknowledge also yesterday evening a very happy event. Miss Lisa Brooks was rescued from the fourth store, fourth story of the building. I am so thankful that she was found safe and alive. The immediate question I know people are asking is how did she get there and why wasn't she found earlier? I am totally transparent with you. I do not know. We do not know, but understand, please, that I and the city is committed to finding out why. I'm going to be um, moving to other speakers here in a moment but know that I am very interested in that particular issue also. Um, the last few uh, many days, um, and especially yesterday, the, the Davenport Police Department has been working diligently to account for the known occupants of the building. Chief Blada will speak in a moment uh, on that particular effort, uh, but at this time we have five individuals that are still unaccounted for. Two of those we believe to be possibly still in the building. We understand that this is an unthinkable situation, especially for the families that are involved and impacted um, by this event. Last night, the Danport Fire Department, Danport Police Department with, met with the families of the two particular unaccounted for folks uh, that we believe might be in the building. Our community stands with this, these families and supports them. And again, my heart goes out to the families of the people that are unaccounted for. We want to update today the community, and thank you for helping with that, on the efforts that have been taken over the last past 36 hours. A lot of work has been done, and you're going to hear about that. And there is a lot of work that remains to be done. We are committed to that work. I'm going to turn this over to Chief Belato in a moment, but understand we are committed. I am so happy to have some of my colleagues here to my left from the City Council, and so happy to have the leaders and people that are doing the work that are committed to this. I know there's a lot of discussion about nothing's happening. That is not true, and you're going to hear about that. So thank you. Um, you'll hear from many speakers, so again, please wait to the end. I'll come back up at the end, and then we'll go through a respective way to uh, get all your questions addressed. Chief Blake. Thank you, Mayor. Again, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chief Jeff Bladel, the Danport Police Department. So early on in the incident, um, the Danport Police Department worked with uh, Red Cross, building owners, building property managers, family and friends, uh, to compile a list of individuals or possible tenants within the within the building. Um, we utilized uh, all of our investigative resources and continued to work with not only uh, our local but our state um, and even went door to door to try to uh, to work on those efforts to identify and actually locate people. Uh, based on the consolidated information at this time, uh, as the mayor said, we have five that are unaccounted for uh, and two uh, that we have a firm belief that are potentially still in that building. 
Um, we've utilized every, uh, we continue to attempt to verify every bit of information that we receive and continue to work with the other agencies um, who have information regarding who might be uh, within that list. Um, additionally, last night, uh, again, as the mayor said, and I'll confirm, uh, we had a city contingency meet with two families uh, and provide them a personal debrief of where we were at with the situation, what we're doing, and how we can continue to work with this. So, again, this is a tragedy. Um, this is a horrific uh, event that our community has uh, never experienced before. Um, we have a number of individuals within our community that are impacted, uh, people displaced, uh, family members that are still missing. So we ask our community to continue to rally around the families, continue to rally around uh, the process, uh, and we'll continue to provide updates uh, when we can do that. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I am Mike Carlston, Fire Chief of the Davenport Fire Department. I'd like to provide you a little bit of update of what we have done so far. Uh, as everyone knows, a recap here, a little before 5 on Sunday, May 28th, the Davenport Fire Department responded to a report of a building collapse. Our crews arrived on scene and found a six-floor apartment complex with partial collapse at the rear side of the building. Quickly, our crews began rescue operations within the first hour. Within that first hour, we had seven reported rescues that we had and over a dozen individuals that we are able to help out of the building. We are very thankful for the efforts of law enforcement, Medic EMS, and all the fire agencies for their hard work. This was truly a team effort. It was not just the Davenport Fire Department that made this happen and got in there to make this work. We went through the building. Primary searches were completed throughout the building. We contacted our regional technical rescue team and they responded to the scene to assist with rescue operations. We had over 150 trained, per, per, excuse me, 150 trained professionals, including fire, police, EMS, medical staff, and city staff respond within the first 12 hours of this incident. These crews coordinate with the Davenport Fire Department and we quickly began a secondary search of the facility. Through these efforts, a, a eighth victim was located and extricated due to the nature of her injuries and entrapment. The extrication took an extended period of time. During this time, uh, crews were able to complete a secondary search of the building. We also contacted the Iowa Task Force I'm sorry, Iowa Task Force One Urban Search and Rescue Team out of Cedar Rapids Division. They responded to the scene with over 25 individuals and assisted with rescue operations. These rescue operations included a second structural and situational evaluation. Part of the Iowa Task Force response included multiple searches throughout the building and the debris pile with six specially trained service animals checking for live victims and any human remains. Based on the information provided through multiple searches and other methods, including canines, drones, thermal imaging, infrared, and trained rescuers, no confirmed viable signs of life were noted at that time. We continue to evaluate the structural stability of the building and are focused on the investigative aspect of locating unaccounted for individuals. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Amy Anderson. She is a family member of Ryan Hitchcock. Mr. Hitchcock is one of our unaccounted for individuals at this time. Hi, thank you for um, taking my statement and allowing me to speak. Um, first off, I would like to say that this, I, I completely wanted to come and make my voice heard on, um, on behalf of, of Ryan. I was extremely close with him and I would know that he would want what I'm about to say. Um, we did meet with the city last night and did get um, a lot more information and was able to speak through our concerns with them. Um, and in leaving last night, I was completely just kind of mortified about the protests and the people, you know, raising a voice on, and they, and they don't know Ryan, they don't know our family. Um, the city does have a plan and pushing any delays is one more day that he's under there. M making, going through all of, all of this, I, Ryan wouldn't want anyone else to put their lives at risk to unfortunately somebody who 
probably has not survived. I don't discount that he could be trapped under there miraculously. We've seen some miraculous things and our God is good, but you know, I, we don't want to see any more families lose their lives or anybody else be injured in trying to remove that rubble and have anything fall. We would like to see the city, what they their plan is to time, kind of take it out piece by piece. Um, they have given us our word that they are going to um, treat that already collapsed area with sensitivity to the remains that are underneath there and excavate them as soon as possible and recover them. That's really what we want. We do not want um, a full-on de demolition or a full-on delay um, for that building to even collapse more and put more rubble on top of them, which then would make things longer and more unlikely that there's any survivors underneath of there. So I plead with our community just to let the city do their job. Right now it is an absolute no-win situation, but this is the best plan of attack. And we don't want anyone else hurt. And we just want to recover, you know, our family. So Brian was, he loved Jesus, and we know he's with the Lord. And we just, yeah. We just pray that you would respect our family's wishes and what, what he would want. And we do not, absolutely do not want this to escalate into something that gets more intense and more violent. Um, it is the last thing this community needs right now. We just need to be pulling together and focusing on who has already lost what we can provide them and support the city in their best efforts to take that building down safely and recover what's already underneath of there. It, I just plead with you guys just to stop. Just proceed in love, proceed in giving, proceed in hope and, and support and prayers. And that's what we need. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Assistant Chief Jim Morris. I serve as the city's fire marshal. This morning I spoke with technical rescue personnel regarding the viability of an additional search of this building. It is our goal to be able to conduct a search for additional occupants and any pets that still remain inside. We are currently working with technical rescue teams to determine the best options to provide an additional search. Our search teams are currently deployed on site and evaluating the building. It is, has been noted since day one that we've responded there, that building is unstable and it continues to worsen as time progresses. During the initial search, the building continued to shift as crews were on site. It's incredibly important that we're digitally, digi diligently coordinating with structural engineers and our rescue teams on the best way to proceed. It's the opinion of the structural engineer that any additional search operations in the area of that pile of debris should be avoided due to potential collapse. We are currently evaluating the risk assessment of where we can go back into that building to do this other search. We're very sympathetic to the possibility that there's two people. that there's two people still left inside. Sorry. We are partnering, we are partnering with other entities as well as our department to respectfully remove any possible human remains with dignity.
as the assistant chief. It's sorry. It's extremely difficult when you can't run up to a pile of bricks and rocks. and just start throwing things off. As much as we want to, we want to get everybody out and we want to do it right now. I apologize that I get upset, but <laughs> there's a lot of things that we have to factor. So understand, it's not that we don't want to do this, it's the fact that we have to do it in a safe manner. And at this point, we're going to reevaluate how safe we can be in order to get in there and not currently make the situation any worse. This building, as Chief Carlson talked before, Iowa Task Force One came in here. That's our state's regional expert team that came in here for urban search and rescue, and they, too, agreed with us that this building is extremely volatile. This building does need to come down and it needs to come down in a controlled manner so that we do not create any more damage or lives lost. Thank you. My name is Larry Sanhas. I'm a structural engineer with Shive Hattery. Um, I got a call uh, rel su late Sunday night uh, from city staff uh, asking me to come out and provide some uh, engineering advice on the site during the recovery and rescue. Um, I've been up for most of 36 hours. Um, I've been working with other engineers, um, with the uh, first responders, the fire and police, and I think I wanted to go over a little bit about the building and what's going on with that. Um, straightforward answer to the question. The building was built in the early 1900s, okay, it's over 100 years old. And the, um, the building is made of brick and steel, okay? It was built in a way that was state of the art at the time, but it is not a new building. And the brick on the outside holds the steel frame inside up, and at the same time the steel of the building holds the brick up. So when you lose the brick, you lose the stability of the building. And there's a danger. The building is in imminent danger of, of collapse as it had, as it did on Sunday. That we were just looking out the window, seeing additional pieces of the roof tending toward t wanting to fall. So um, I was watching the dogs. Um, in the early hours of uh, Monday morning and just thinking about, you know, the, the handlers and, 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 and hoping that they would, uh, they would get on that pile and, and come off and be safe. Um, the condition of the building is worsening over time. I just saw that. Um, the, the, um, it's, 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 it's brittle, it's non-redundant, and it's difficult to say how soon it will continue to collapse. Um, but the way the building was built with short pieces of steel, depending upon the exterior brick for stability, that, that's not how you'd build a modern building. Well, you, know, you, you have less chance, it, you had five stories collapse into one almost immediately. And that, you know, so, so the five stories are sitting on the first floor and, and, and the basement. Okay, that reduces the chances that there will be spaces, what we call void spaces, 
large spaces where people can can survive. So the the removal of the debris pile, the debris pile itself is holding helping to hold the building up. Okay? The debris pile itself is helping to hold the building up. So you want to do that with care. Okay? We're bringing in a laser stand, scanning drone crew. Uh, I've been working back with folks at the office. I've been working with folks in EMS, and uh, uh, the first responders had their own structural engineer who came out in the middle of the night from the other side of Iowa. We, he came up and agreed with the same conclusion I had when I came to that site and was horrified. Be careful. Be careful because this building is going to collapse. This building is going to collapse at its own time. Okay, so we're we're bringing in uh, survey equipment and we're bringing in the drone and we're bringing in a crew, and I'm depending upon the good folks back that are supporting me to document the condition of that building. It is it, we're going to try and build a complete digital 3D model using a scanning drone to assess the condition of it, assess the prospect of future collapse, and help ultimately the city to figure out, you know, the what's, the where's, and the why's. But it's too soon right now for the, the, that. The best thing that I can do to serve the city at this time and the, and the victims, my heart goes out for the victims. It, it, it is difficult to participate in this, but it is necessary. I, I tell, I go to schools and tell young people about civil engineering. I say it's for the people. And this is when you go and do it, is when the city and the people need you. So with that, I'm going to, that, that's all I have. Back to the mayor. Thank you. Okay, almost time for questions. I know you're interested. So just a quick wrap up for me a little bit. I know there's been concern of investigation, what are you doing? So I just want to say this publicly. Documentation, videos, photos, logs from respected folks that are keeping everything will be turned over to an investigation team. Um, the lead of that team is yet to be determined, but we are in consult with state officials on the proper course of action uh, to do that. That will happen. We're committed to do that. There's a lot of things to gather and more yet to gather, but that's a commitment you'll have that we are going to do that. I want to have a little call to action and I want to thank the community, the reaching out of how can I provide this or that or water or food or whatever. Please, please, please everything go to the Red Cross. They are coordinating the effort for the displaced folks, everything else, that's where it needs to go, the shelters. Um, Please reach out to the Red Cross. We are grateful for the community support, and there's been a lot of it. They've reached out to me, mayors from across the state, legislatures, our congressmen, uh, I'm sorry, congresswoman, senators. I've talked to the governor four times in the last two days. She has signed the declaration, $5,500 per person per displaced, based on if you were part of that. We are reach, we're going to find some, more, some city money to help. We are using every avenue and every level of assistance, uh, and it is being um, graciously accepted. The outpouring from all levels at the federal level, state level, local level, county level, uh, individual level, community level to assist, I am so thankful for. But as people continue to decide in how to give, how to help, the Red Cross is the place to go. I appreciate the outpouring of support to our first responders, uh, the bringing and showing up of truckloads of stuff, food, water, Gatorade, et cetera. It is extremely appreciated. But from this point forward, please put your efforts into the Red Cross and to, to the displaced people. That's who needs to be helped. We'll take care of the other folks. Um, again, thankful to Governor Reynolds and thankful to our uh, legislative folks, Congresswoman, Miller Meeks, uh, Senator Ernst, Senator Grassley, um, all the, the county supervisors, my respective mayors in the Quad Cities, the mayors across the state just got off the phone with the Cedar Rapids Mayor O'Donnell. Um, the outpouring, I said I wasn't going to do it, you made me. Sorry. 
the outpouring of support, the outpouring of help, the outpouring of action with the whole purpose. Just like I said in a previous uh, press conference, the, the outpouring of support that I've seen that our first responders and our fire going in the building immediately after this thing collapsed, irrespective of their own safety, irrespective of what, what might or might not happen, with the sole purpose of helping and finding folks. Multiple people going in, multiple teams. And you heard the talk about the state folks mobilizing semi-truckloads full of equipment. And if any of you were here yesterday morning watching that litany of equipment, all of those folks arriving here in the middle of the night, immediately assessing and going into how can, where can I go and getting into that building from different perspectives, working with our first responders, and then taking the dogs in and doing their work with the sole purpose of knowing that thing is unsafe, but I'm going in anyway. And I know there's a lot of, been a lot of discussion about giving some people some grief about what we're doing. These heroes that are going in these buildings, get off of that. You want to come at somebody, here, I'm standing right in front of you. Here's the target. These are not. These are the people that are saving lives. So thank you for that. I'll take questions. Raise your hand. I'll point. I'll, I'll start right to left. Ma'am, Maggie. Hi. Maggie Bessler, NBC News. Uh -huh. Thank you. For and and if there's anybody I need to direct, I'll, or if you want particular, we'll do that. Sure. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for giving your perspective. With all due respect to Ryan's family, obviously there are people out there who feel different and hearing a lot of them in here. And you said, I know people want to know, like, how was Lisa Brooks missed? But I'm wondering more broadly, people might be wondering, how did we go from plans to demolish this morning? Like, how did we have a plan to demolish this morning? And now there's no timeline, and we're saying five are missing, and two may be in here. Like, for those who that just doesn't compute, and kind of how was that seemingly missed to that degree early on? So, the, so at least from my perspective, and so the plan to set up to get in position to demolish was to have today to set the stage actually putting the physical demolishment to happen today i don't think that's ever we're continuing to evaluate if anybody wants to add to that chief again jim morris fire marshal so when we originally had evaluated the scene we didn't have the indications even from the state teams from the canine dogs um, in there that would make us proceed we are not we were not looking at instantaneously pulling that building down, but it's either going to come down on its own, which we do not want, but we also want to make sure it's in a controlled manner. We were receiving new information. We, the fire department pulled Lisa Brooks out of that apartment last night. That right there is an indicator that we need to go up there. That was a viable indication that we need to address this. So that's why we're moving forward with reevaluating, getting additional search teams in there to be able to do that. We had no other, we used all of our tools, we used all of Iowa Task Force One's uh, tools and technology um, to assess that, and that's why we're moving forward with the way we are now. So. Yeah, I'm wondering if you could speak more to um, uh, why perhaps the dogs might have missed Lisa. I don't know that we have an, I don't know that we have an answer to that. I, and you heard me say it, that question I'm getting a lot. I don't know. Believe me, though, I want to know. Okay, and so does everybody else. We want to know. All I can tell you is I'm committed to finding out. Sir, in the back. Uh, what is the name of the owner? Have Has the city been in contact with the owner? And is the owner under any criminal investigation? I just have gathered that clue. I I know the owner. He was on site Sunday. I saw him. I don't know if you want to speak any more about that. So yes, the city has been in contact with the building owner. Uh, we are currently uh, consulting with uh, state agencies to figure out uh, who is gonna take the lead in this investigation. But at this time, we have not got to the point where we have determined if a criminal offense has occurred in order to initiate um, a criminal investigation. Regardless of what happens, there will be an investigation into how this happened. There must be. Sorry, 
sorry. What's the owner's name? Uh, Andrew Wold, W O L D. Thank you. Okay, sir. If this building, we just had the structural engineer talk about how bricks were falling off of the building. If this building was not, it was seen as unsafe, why were residents allowed to still in it? How did this building pass inspection? Sorry, I'm just going to stay up here. Yeah, um, this will be next week. Apologize. So, um, there was uh, initial issues with the building. A structural engineer's report was provided um, to the city uh, to outline the work that was done. Uh, it was determined that it was safe by the structural engineer, which was not hired by us. It was hired uh, by, the, by the owner of the building. Um, and they would be able to provide that report in order for us to make a determination um, to continue to occupy the building. So and we'll go back and then we'll come right. back this way. So, yes, Jen. Um, so yesterday at the 7 a.m. press conference, we talked about how at that point there were no, uh, there was no credible information that people were missing or unaccounted for. Then at 9:45 we sent the press release, and at that time it said there are people unaccounted for. Um, Twofold question here. So was there new information provided after that press conference that allowed you guys to know that there were people who were unaccounted for? And then uh, the second question part of that, uh, we're saying five unaccounted for, two probably in the building. Are the two part of that five? Um, yes, and that was part of the reason for our message yesterday morning at 7 o'clock is because we were asking for people to actually call in. We, we needed to have that investigative aspect and that additional information so we could start getting an accurate list. Information we had early on was conflicting, and so that's why we actually wanted to have people that had the best possible information uh, work closely with law enforcement over the last 24 hours so that we have a better idea of actually who was unaccounted for at this time. In the back, ma'am. Sorry, my oh. other question was, are the two people who are probably in the building, are they a part of that five unaccounted for, or are they an addition? Yes, there are a part of the five, part so five. First one is it seems like the city's in a really tough position where it's having to weigh the safety of first responders against the possibility of somebody still being alive in the building. How do you make what, what factors do you use to make decisions like that in this case? And uh, I pre uh, sorry. I mean that's gotta be that's gotta I appreciate be your understanding of that. So probably nothing more hard is understanding that we especially they want to do everything they can to be in there in every possible place in every I mean one of the victims and I'll try and say this very generally was in a place that is unbelievably dangerous to get out those folks didn't care about that their focus was to go and do that and and save the life surgeons from this community were in the building exercising trauma surgery in the building saving lives so for me and our respective team Understanding that the effort of the first responders and other medical professionals to go and do everything they can and the risk analysis for me and our respective leadership, knowing from our experts abroad, as you saw, people from across the state coming to advise us on the structural capability of that can I allow that? I don't know that I, I still am struggling with that, right? But that's what we're doing. And through the great work of Chief Morris and the Mavis, Mavis team, who are willing to do this, and we are working through that to do this, and our want is to do this. There, has, there is a continual evaluation and want to go in again. We are evaluating that, but the, you're right that that's me, and I'm and, and our respective leadership to decide. You know, if we're based on all the experts, so 
I appreciate you understanding that, sir. In the back, oh, you had one more, man. Yeah. Does and then. The city have a plan? What happens if the building comes down? Uh, which. Then we are going to do. Yep. Yeah, then, um, then the res We have talked in depth about the being the, the respectful dignity piece. Knowing that this could be a place of rest, for some of the unaccounted. We are. In, investigating and evaluating as best as we can with a lot of assistance from places other than here and reaching out to other places that have experienced this to do what we can to be as respectful and, and dignified to what that is a place of rest um, that's that would then be the focus and we are already working through that sir Rich, you provided that report. Good, Rich. Tell, tell me uh, so, Rich Oswald, uh, Development Neighborhood Services Director. So, the engineering firm was uh, Select Structural Engineering out of Bettendorf. Um, so, they actually provided uh, two um, engineering reports within the in last six months one uh, the end of January, then one here last week. Um, what the city asked was that in January they let us know the building is structurally sound or they would have to vacate it. They came back and said the building was structurally sound at that time, and they went with the belief that it was safe to have uh, tenants in there. Um, so we've asked that numerous times. Okay, we'll go back this way, and then I'll come back. I'm sorry, we didn't finish here. Yeah, Mayor, do we have an accurate count of how many people live there, and was it found by five? Do you want to count each one? I mean, what's the number did we start with? I think we're still working with you guys. I think we're still working with you guys. Yeah. So, our numbers were around 53 for the tenant list. We know that there's 80 units in that building. Um, so again, we got three different sources of people who lived in that building. And that's where we cross-reference our uh, lists. So 53 is sort of a reasonable number at this moment, but we're still not quite sure. Right. Yes. Okay. And 50 and, and the five are from that 53. Yes. Okay. And there have been that is. Uh, I will credit the police and, and chiefs folks. We have been given multiple lists, multiple numbers, and the scrutiny to make sure we get this right has been an intense task that they've been involved in. So I'll go back to this way and we'll go back across again. Sir. Hey, Zachary Ernst, Smith, IPR News. Um, my question's about the two reports filed in January and then two, the, the, was it two weeks ago? Um, one, I wanted to see if the city is going to make those uh, available, and then two, I wanted to know a little bit about what started that process. What, what was it exactly that cited those two reports to Sure. So I, I believe we'll make those available, right? Um, so what started was we had some uh, veneer brick popping on the back um, of the wall. So then that's when our chief building official and building staff went in, and then they required the first report. Uh, the second report started with they had some more uh, veneer brick falling, so we asked for another report. And the, in response to the second report, I mean, was the city satisfied with what this structural engineer hired by the firm, hired by the landlord? So the chief building official was satisfied with what the engineer requested the repairs and how the repairs were to be made. Okay. Yes. It's a bit of a messaging question, so I hope you'll allow it. People out there feel like someone failed them. Did the city fail them? Did the owner fail them? Like, who failed them? Because they just think there's no way that this is not the result of at least one failure, and they're feeling... So my hearts are out to them. I can only say, from my perspective, I think I can speak on behalf of the city. The responders, the people that do the work, we have city council folks here, staff, we do everything we can to try and ensure safety. We require things like engineering reports. As soon as something is identified, investigating to see that people are doing what they're supposed to do, i.e. what Mr. Oswald just said. We will continue to do that and we will continue to understand what that is and do the best we can to um, move forward with um, whatever it is, whether it's handing everything over to an investigator so that an outside person is looking into whatever happened. We, we want that answer too. So we will continue to do it and 
that's all I can. That's but as their mayor, do you feel like the city failed them when we're talking about these investigations? And they say it's pretty clear there were huge cracks in the wall. Like they feel like they didn't need an engineer. I I totally understand what they're saying. Yeah. Um, we we require engineers and experts to evaluate things just like we require experts in other fields to evaluate things. We will keep after that and we owe them moving forward um, what happened to do our best to get answers for folks. So Mayor. Some people are upset they can't retrieve their belongings. Is there any possible way to have first responders, other people retrieve retrieve those for them? So I won't speak to belongings, but I know the right. question of pets has come up and others. Well, we, we worked with the Humane Society, are working with the Humane Society to identify all of that to the best of our ability, and Chief might talk, but if, you know, we fully understand if we go back in, and we're trying to do that, to, to work to get those things out. In belongings, I don't think we're going to allow individuals to go back into that dangerous situation. You mean first responders? First responders might go back in. But first responders will be going back in to see if we can save lives. Could uh, somebody talk a little bit more about what a controlled demolition process would look like? Would that involve explosives or taking the building apart? So no, as a fire marshal, I will not allow them to use explosives in a, in a heavily populated downtown area. This would be a coordinated uh, demolition uh, methodically. Um, there's a lot of weight load on that, on that rooftop there with chillers, air conditioning units, utilities, that kind of thing. So there are in the pro there, we are in the process of meeting uh, with contractors to be able to basically disassemble that building um, and do it safely. I do not. Again, this is fluid and flexible. This building shifted when we were operating in there, and each time we were in there, it shifted at some point. So we could walk out of this room right now, and that building could only have 20 minutes on top of it. So we need to evaluate what we see uh, between the structural engineer, our technical rescue teams, and formulate the best possible way to strategically go in there. Sir? Very quick one, the three others out of the five who are unaccounted for, the three others, any hints or any idea of where they are if they're not likely to be in the building? Yeah, so we're continuing that investigation piece. So the list that we had, some may have been an old tenant list, so we're checking to make sure that they're actually in that building. We have reason to believe they're in that building. So we're continuing that piece, uh, and we'll continue to piece that until we can exhaust all measures. Fire across, okay, one, th one two, three. Yep. Uh, my question is about uh, resident complaints again. It seems like um, from the previous press conferences, it sounded like you guys were familiar with this property based on resident complaints. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, so the city of Davenport, our rental uh, inspection program, so any resident complaint would be investigated by a uh, rental inspector. Uh, if something was found in violation or need of repair, they would send out an official notice and order of what needed to be fixed, and then that would be followed up on until the building was in whatever that repair was in compliance so um being that size of a building it undergoes a rental inspection every two years so, so. Jenna and then. um talking just back on uh the demolition aspect of it would there be and, and this might be too early to determine at this point but is there would there be an effort to demolish it away from that pile of rubble so that you could then later go back into that pile of rubble to search for remains Larry saying that structural engineer. Um, you're going to start demolishing it. One of the mo well, the most likely place to start demolishing that building is probably in the in the area of the debris pile, which unfortunately is is the area of concern with respect to uh, victims. So that the 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 the, the there there's concern about. Uh, the building is close to an alley, close to adjacent buildings on the south side. So the demolition, the contractor would have to take care not to damage any adjacent property or uh, city or, or a problem. Yeah. John, and then I'll come back. Then I'll come back over here. 
think I heard two different things regarding the structural engineer report that Wool contracted with the Bettendorf firm. I heard earlier that the report was, re was submitted and it was deemed structurally sound, and then I heard later that it was the report was submitted and it required additional repairs. What is there? Yeah, sorry about that. I'll clarify. So in the original January uh, report requested, so for that repair work, which was uh, brick work, we de they said the building was structurally sound for people to stay in. So that repair work was done under permitted. It was signed off on. And then just uh, in May, we had a second incident that required a new structural engineering report. The permits were currently pulled, and they were currently making those repairs at the time of the collapse. So neither of those reports claimed that it was structurally sound. If both reports stated that it needed repairs in order for it to be sound? So stated it needed repairs, but stated the building was uh, structurally not uh, structurally sound for people to stay in. It, the work could be done with people inside the building. Okay. Sorry. Um, we'll go right to left again. Uh, and this is back to the one more, one more right to left. Uh, um, I wanted to hear a little bit about the kind of what it is that this report found, right? If they, if it was deemed structurally sound, right? So it's had old, the people, I don't know, raises some concerns about kind of like what the inspection process might look like, right? Can you tell us to give us a little bit more detail on kind of like why this was passed, right? Given that it did collapse. Sure. So the current repairs being made at the time of collapse were, were not passed. Like right? they were still in progress. Um, the repairs in January met what building code requires for repairs. They were inspected by our inspectors, our chief building officials, and, and those were passed. So um, to in depth of what the reports say, I don't have them in front of me, so I don't want to misspeak on them. So at a, I can get those to you and, and go from there. All right. Get those to you. Thank you. Um, I have two questions. Is it possible to do kind of a combo like demolition while also Uh, I can tell you from my perspective, with the knowledge I have, um, I do not see us doing a demolition with an active search at the same time. Um, we will definitely have any recovery efforts will be part of a demolition, and that will be a priority as we move forward. Amy, would you take a question? We talked you're, yesterday. You're okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay. We talked yesterday, and you were pretty frustrated with not having any answers and not being able to speak to what was happening in the building. What is it today that changed? Your support and throwing your support behind the city. Okay, so I can't say my support is 100% behind the city. I, I can't say the support is 100% behind. All we want is Brian to be respected. We want it to be taken and handled sensitively so that if, you know, I said earlier he loved Jesus, he's probably with the Lord, but he also could be you know divinely trapped and that's what we're praying for I just want the whole situation to be handed handled sensitively to that area and whatever is the best means possible to extract that area to see what's underneath of there and to also preserve lives and injuries to other of our first responders or anybody else involved it's a tough balance it's life for life it's 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 it just it's a hard situation you know but we, we, what I, what we won't ultimately want is them to find and recover Ryan um, and I, I can't speak for Brandon's family um, but I'm sure that's what they want to and they want it to be a priority um, I just would really hope that they would take the the prior you know that put that as a priority to them to get it safe enough to go in and excavate that rubble to recover what's underneath of there and make the steps of the action plan in order that that way so it's it's can be as good of a, a win as possible. So that's kind of, that's where I stand. And they did explain a lot of things too that we Thank didn't you. know. Thank, Thank you, you Mayor. Mayor, two part question. It's my understanding that before Lisa Brooks was found that it was, the building was gonna start being demolished this morning. Is that correct? No, the, the, the setup and staging of things was gonna start to be happening. I don't know that we have an exact timeline that the 
physical demolishment was going to happen. There were there were things that have to happen. Permitting, staging, discussion, working. That obviously leads to a time and a date. I don't know what that is. What made you guys comfortable enough to say in your email that demolition will begin and that you you acknowledge that you believe everyone was out of the building and clearly at the that time? Was not the case? Yeah, the information we had was. Do you understand that potentially Lisa or these other two gentlemen in, that are potentially still in that building could have been killed by demolition? We fully understand that. That's why it's not being demoed. We're, we haven't demoed it. But it was planning to. Okay, we haven't demoed it. We understood this evalu uh, our continuous evaluation of what to do or not to do happened in real time. Okay? It, we, you did not see anything moving towards that building. In, in, in Florida, when the condo collapsed, it took 10 days before they decided to demo. Why were you guys so quick to make that decision? We haven't demoed it. I understand you're homed in on that. We might have been saying we're going well, to demo. Okay. Well, I didn't send it. I didn't send an email. Okay. I didn't send an email. We haven't demoed it. We understand that. So, when we come to demoing the building, it's it's a priority for us to figure out to do it safely, and that's that's the problem that we're running into. Is I spoke about this before. We need this to be in a controlled manner, and. We have used all of our resources, all of our technology, all of our tools to determine if there is any other life safety issues inside that building. Once we've determined that and we have no more indications or clues, then we need to start moving towards that. The building has not come down. As you can see, we didn't throw a bunch of heavy equipment in there and start ripping stuff down. We do not want that building to come down in an uncontrolled manner because that is going to cause issues for both us as public safety and the community. We want to be able to safely take that building down. I can't stress that enough. When you have a building that is that unpredictable with the shifting and everything in there, we want to be safe about this and we don't want any more uh, of the community injured. Matt? Yeah. Um, okay, you I had a quick question. I, I know you guys are still investigating and So on the initial dispatch, it did come in as a car had hit the building. Um, that is not true. There was no car that hit the building. Okay. What about the floodwaters? Is that something that's concerned you with uh, so much water in the area over the last couple of months? I did not see any indications of flooding uh, in that area. Or no. Let's see. Jenna, Maggie, and then we're done. Two questions here. Uh, the first one, we know the name of one of the people on accounted for that you believe is in the building, Ryan. Um, can you talk about, can you tell us who the other person is? We don't have, we don't have the name. We'll get the names released when we can. Okay, thank you. And then. One more. Uh, and then. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Can I just ask, our question is a different way, because the email did say, I don't mean to drill down on this too much, but demolition was expected to commence in the morning to a layman. Respectfully, we get there's a lot that goes into it that people might not know. Okay. That sounds like the building's going to start coming down. So can I ask, did demolition plans change when Lisa Brooks popped out of her window last night and was rescued? Demo demolition plans have continuously been evaluated. Did so. they change from what you knew basically at noon yesterday when you sent that email? So when we say demolition plans, when you start that, again, I just referenced, we're not going to come in with heavy equipment and start pulling things off. It's methodically got to got to get done. It could be hours or days depending on what we see because when they start pulling units off the top of that roof and the building starts to shift, that's going to change things. There's a lot of planning that has to go into place in order for us to do this safely. So we have to start the process, and by that is demo, demo, demolition planning is occurring so but it's a stark contrast from thinking there's no one in there to a woman waving out her fourth floor window so did demolition plans change when it became very clear that there a are people still in absolutely the there's new information that comes up we had no indications um, from any of the uh, responders that we had any of our tools any of the canines um, at that time so at some point we had to 
move forward. As this is fluid and flexible, we start moving to change once we had a new indication that there was somebody in the building. Hence the reason why we are talking with technical rescue teams and the structural engineer to figure the safest way to do another search. Okay. One last one. Do you have any idea of where in the building you'll be looking? Uh, that will be determined on uh, the consultation with the structural engineer and the technical rescue team. Okay. One more because you've been holding your hand up. Thank then you. we're done. Yeah. Um, do you guys have surveillance video of the actual collapse and when it happened? Um, I know there are obviously several buildings in the area. Do you have that? Is the city reviewing it? And is that going to be made available? Yes, we do have some video footage of the actual collapse itself and absolutely we have been reviewing it to try and determine exactly where what and why and um will you release it yeah yes i i don't We're, our intent i don't know pop timelines our intent is everything we have will be given to certainly the investigators and probably everybody else i i cannot commit to you when no. okay thank you very